Dead or Alive is one of those franchises that I've always had a weird affinity for. There's something about the hand-to-hand -hand combat, having a reversal hold system that just sucks me in. Being able to string together combos and interrupt your opponents by literally grabbing their fists and throwing them on the ground feels so good. However, this series is also a bit of a guilty pleasure. Dead or Alive just also happens to have uh, a lot of other assets as well. Fighting games aren't really a genre I've talked about much on this channel, but I sure do play a lot of them. Around E3, back in June of 2018, Dead or Alive 6 was announced to confusion among fans. Wanting the franchise to be taken more seriously as an eSport, Team Ninja director Yohei Shimbori stated that they were adjusting mechanics as well as toning down the sexuality of the characters. I come to you today to announce that that was a bunch of bullshit. Uh, so we do apologize if we were a we offended anyone during the broadcast. So yo, it's Austin, and thanks to Koei Tecmo for giving me a review copy so I could take a look at the newest entry in one of my favorite fighting game franchises. I'm going to be looking at the PC version, but first, a little bit of history. Believe it or not, I'm not actually talking about the Bon Jovi song. Dead or Alive is the brainchild of Tomunobu Itagaki, who previously worked on Tecmo Super Bowl, which was super rad. Itagaki uh, didn't leave on the best of terms, what with a lawsuit, but the legacy he left behind at Koei Tecmo is pretty sick. The Ninja Gaiden reboot remains one of, if not the best video game reboots of all time. Dead or Alive ain't so shabby either. However, ever since the original PlayStation 1 game, DOA has been regarded as the booby one. As much as I'd like to defend that, I, I just can't. <laughs> Look at this shit. It's like a giga pudding on a Japanese pancake on an air balloon in a wind tunnel. Must be jelly cause don't shake like that. At first there were just three girls and now there's like a million. If you can't tell, the folks at Ninja Team are very fond of the female figure. You get it. Dead or Alive's pervy, it gets schlocky. The first one I played, Too Hardcore, had an age slider that lets you unlock the boob limiters. Commercials at the time knew this, I knew this, and so did everyone else. Well, I, I, I only play for the fighting. This reputation was only strengthened when Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball came. It was all downhill from there, and that's not just because of the voice of Dennis Rodman. Dead or Alive 3 through 5, while well, all fun fighting games just weren't taken seriously by critics or even fighting game communities. I mean, I can understand why. You don't want people having to take a break during grand finals, but okay, okay. So I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite fighting game franchises, Dead or Alive, and you know, the things that it does good and bad, because underneath the skin is actually a pretty in-depth game. In-depth. Words. So how's the PC version? It's fine, I guess. As with most Koei Tecmo ports, it's extremely lacking in options, and you need a pretty beef computer to run it. But if you do, then I don't really have any complaints. It looks great in 4K, runs at a solid 60 frames a second, and has extremely short loading times. It's all right. But first things first, is Dead or Alive 6 something you should play in front of your family? <laughs> only if you're a degenerate. As previously stated, DOA 6 has some weird moments in it. The violence itself is pretty tame, especially when compared to bloody-ass Mortal Kombat or Evil Zone, violent on your eyes anyway. The way I see it, there are three important aspects every fighting game needs to nail down in order to feel exciting and competitive. The first of which is fluidity. Does your fighting game look like this? Yeah, no, that's no good. The Dead or Alive franchise has always had stellar animation tied to your button presses, and 6 is no exception to this. Newly introduced mechanics, like the super-like break blow, can be activated at any point during a combo. For both experts and beginners, this means you can clutch out a big hit with relative ease at any time. Y'all remember the holds I was talking about earlier? 6 has given the player more opportunities to do this, but also allowing chain canceling, offensive holds, and other stuff. The super meter system has a new type of attack tied to R1 which can cause fatal stuns as well as Tekken-esque sidestepping. Listen, for those of you I'm overwhelming right now, don't you worry. Dead or Alive 6 has one of the deepest and most educational tutorials I've seen in a fighting game. Every single mechanic you can do gets one or more sections that will teach you exactly what you need to do. Previously, Undernight Inbirth had an amazing tutorial for those looking to get started with fighting games, but Dead or Alive 6 might have the best 3D fighting 
fighting game tutorial. But even without deep fundamentals or fighting game experience, DOA 6 feels fluid anyways. The second aspect I feel that's imperative to a good game is aesthetic. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is solid proof that even if you're mechanically solid and competitively viable, if it looks like ass, no one's gonna take it seriously. DOA as a whole has always had this weird aesthetic falling somewhere between anime and realistic, with the uncanny valley-esque cans making some fights slightly unsettling. DOA 6 somehow leaned a bit further in both directions, giving us plenty of screen time for Nico and Hanukkah, the most anime characters yet. And then in combat, characters get all bruised up, a bit bloody, their clothes get dirty and torn to shreds. Finally, a fighting game where I can rotate the camera around to look directly at my big dirty butt. Oh, gross. Characters as a whole can fall into the aesthetic category, and like I mentioned earlier, it's mostly a lot of chicks, but Team Ninja has thankfully given us plenty of buff-ass dudes to gawk at as well. Without leaning too heavily on national stereotypes, races and countries from all around the world are represented, and that's pretty cool. I'm pretty fond of Diego. He's basically the Mexican-American Travis Touchdown, who prefers punching things over the shake weight sword. The stages themselves are a bit of a mixed bag, though. Some of the moving objects and environments look fantastic, and then others look like they're a generation or two behind, which is absurd. It's nothing game-breaking since it's not the focus, but it feels a step behind Tekken in this regard, although any stage where you get pushed into people and they push you back into the ring is pretty awesome. How about the music? fighting game music. Nothing wrong here. Sound effects and punches all feel crunchy and pulling off cool moves is accompanied by really big sounds. I like it. Finally, the last of our categories, any fighting game worth a damn has to have a fun progression and variety. Yeah, not a good story mode. With all respect to your Mortal Kombats and Injustices, I've yet to play a story mode in a fighting game and feel like it enhanced the product itself. A lot of them are just like DOA 6, and it ends up being 20 or 30 seconds of cutscene, and then we fight. Next cinematic. Nethersoft Realm Studios has been trying to enhance this, but it doesn't make those games flow better. Yeah, this is like the opposite of Mortal Mortal Kombat, that shit's too stiff. Let's take a quick look at Dead or Alive 6's story mode. It turns out that Hanoka is the most powerful being in the world. Nico wants to resurrect Raido, and all the ninjas run around doing ninja things. Oh, and also there's this. I'm so sorry, are you okay? I'm okay, but you've gotta be more careful. Just like any fight game story, the tournament this centers around is hardly the central part of the narrative. <laughs> In fact, it's so bad this time around that I couldn't even tell who won the tournament through the cutscenes. So sure, yay. A fun progression is like, let me play through arcade mode, unlock some characters, some, some outfits, titles, accessories, play a mini game here and there, and generally feel like playing through single player is giving me some practice for the big leagues online, or with my friends. Traditionally, Dead or Alive as a whole has been good on this. Two through five had plenty of things for you to unlock along the way. However, it's in this category that Dead or Alive 6 is a monumental failure, and what has led to it being a massive disappointment for me. Yeah, sorry, that was sudden. As much as I like the game, there's a lot of stuff that it does very, very poorly. DOA 6 doesn't have a tag team mode, something that's been in every game since 2. We're also down to 24 base characters from last round's 34. This isn't uncommon in new sequels, but you know, a third of the fighters are missing now. Your main method of unlocking content is through a mode called DOA Quest, which does the Angry Bird star thing. You play through a match while having to do certain goals for each star, with each goal unlocking something, like money or like a data log entry. These goals are like do five holds, do a seven hit combo, win in under 30 seconds. There's 104 of these in the game and literally all of them are basically the exact same thing with different goals. It's not super enjoyable, especially when you get goals like get 1 million points in survival mode. It feels like a time waster, but if you do get all three of the stars, you unlock costume points. Now you would think that would be a currency you could spend to just unlock 
unlock whatever you wanted to, but no. You do a quest, and you get the costume points towards a random costume for a random character. There's no indication as to what this might count towards in the menu. You a big fan of playing Hitomi, best girl like myself? Well, you're stuck with her gi outfit and a low-hanging bandana unless you get lucky enough to unlock other parts. You can buy haircuts and like glasses, but that's it. Let's say you do get an outfit you want. You still don't actually have the costume. Now you have to spend the gold currency you get from leveling up and doing fights in order to unlock it. Granted, the amount of gold you get is high, but like, really? You have to go through this much just to unlock the only substantial amount of content this game has. And of course, you can't forget about the worst part. Look, let's say you go on a mission that gives you 500 points, but you unlock a costume that only costs 200, meaning, at least to my knowledge, you have 300 points that are now uh, in the ether and cannot be reclaimed because the amount of missions are finite. So, yeah. Remember when you would play Dead or Alive 3 or something? You'd go through the arcade mode and get yourself a new costume or a character and maybe a weird ending. Unfortunately, that's not how it goes here. There's not even an ending. I played through an entire arcade mode and was granted with one, count them one, costume point. Each costume costs between 100 and 1,000, so yeah. You'll get a majority of these through other means, rendering arcade mode basically useless. Unless you want titles, I guess. And then I remembered how much DLC Dead or Alive 5 has, and by the end of its lifespan, how it was like literally almost $1,300. If you're one of those people who bought all of those, I would love to meet you. Unfortunately, this isn't where it ends. Dead or Alive 6 decided to launch with no lobby matches for the first month, making your only method of playing online ranked mode. Here you can earn costume points like 17, 20 at a time, even though there's like a 10 times bonus going on right now. But considering you gained them for random costumes for random characters, you're not gonna get anywhere fast. It's a bad system. So sure, unlocking stuff's a pain in the butt, but hey, you can at least get around some of that and just buy the <clears throat> season pass one for $92.99. Uh, let's see, you get two characters, 64 costumes, $92.99 plus tax. Not even an option to buy a character pass, meaning they'll probably just charge for them individually. You know, with these pricing options, you'd think Dead or Alive 6 was a freemium product, like the free version of 5 was, but no. It's a full-priced game with a $100 season pass. That's a lot of money for what feels like just a new graphics engine and a decent amount of tweaks. It's better than the Galgun one though, I guess. So we've got a super disappointing and disjointed letdown of a story, substantially less content to do in single player, let alone online with only ranked mode at launch for an entire month. Costumes you'll never be able to unlock because at the rate this is going, the player base will be non-existent on PC by the end of the month. Absolutely zero unlocks for clearing story mode except little trivia bits which I, I don't know about you, but this isn't trivia. I think the part about this that hurts the most is that the game is an absolute blast to play. I've always felt like Dead or Alive was an underrated fighting game soaked in a bit of slimy filth and dirty girl butts, but the games themselves were a good value. Dead or Alive 6's new mechanics have brought about, at least in the fighting itself, the best the series has ever been period. It's awesome. Unfortunately, I just can't recommend it at full price because, I mean, shit, you can't even play with your friends online unless you use Parsec, which I did, and it was awesome. Between Dead or Alive 6, Street Fighter 5, and a few other games, it seems like the mainstream fighting game is starting to go the way of free-to-play. To have such little content in the base game and literally hundreds if not thousands of dollars of downloadable content seems like it's gonna be the future of the genre. Dead or Alive 5 Core Fighters was an experiment for fighting games that I guess was successful because Koei Tecmo kept releasing costumes and stages for that shit for years. I mean, hell, it had an Attack on Titan set. Look, I'm always rooting for Dead or Alive. It's probably my favorite fighter to play, not just because it has sexy girls. 
I swear. The combat is brutal looking and the hold system makes it extremely strategic. But I just can't recommend this platform that they're trying to sell because for everything they added, so much more was taken out. Characters, stages, costumes, fucking game modes. But damn, if I don't love playing this game. It's the best it's ever been and I'm probably gonna play it a lot. Despite Shimbori's attempts to push Dead or Alive 6 for esports and competitive based gameplay, it seems like they worked themselves into a hole with this one. Evo took them off stream for not vibing with their core values despite cutting to Mortal Kombat 11 decapitations right after. But maybe the core values they were referring to was the respect for the consumer's dollar. I can only imagine that we're gonna get a Dead or Alive 6 ultimate or last round in the future, so at this moment in time, I can't really recommend buying 6 in its vanilla state, at least not until some of the businessy aspects are worked out, especially considering you're gonna have like 3 or 4 season passes worth of stuff in that new game. Dead or Alive 6 gets a 6 out of 10, I uh, bumped that up to 6.5 when there's player lobbies, 7 if tag team and 10 if I'm gonna buy the season pass. Yo, thanks for watching. Special Patreon shout out to Alfredo Ariano, Chase Scott, Christopher Olivia, Flaming Fighter, Irrational, J. Roos, Jackets, Jacoby Fitzpatrick, Calvin Wong, Legend Gary, Nitron, Plasma Phoenix, Ronnie Vile, Shintaro, and Superfly1787. Thank you very much for your generous donations. I made a quick video. I know I said I was gonna be doing a Kingdom Hearts 3 video, but now that there's a bunch of DLC, I'm gonna wait. It'll be fine. Yo, God Hand next week though. Okay, bye.